PVC is made just like PVC pipe, it's an extrusion. Uh, only this one is 50 feet long, right? Seen a 20 foot section of PVC pipe in the hardware store? It's uh, 50 feet long. And it has 32 cells in it. And um, it's actually made by a company that makes garage doors. They learned how to make really good garage doors. As you can imagine, um, this being 50 feet long, uh, the tolerance from one end to the other is pretty critical. Our detector is uh, basically a pipe filled with liquid, mineral oil, uh, 14 kilotons of it. Think about that. So uh, inside there, uh, each cell is a mineral oil, of course. But there's also mineral oil. Uh, cheap, because um, <laughs> we need a lot of it, right? And um, you can dissolve the pseudo. Yeah, it it can be made into what we call a simulator, which is basically a liquid that has some dopants in it, uh, POP and uh, MSB, I think is the right one, um, and that's all dissolved by a solvent called pseudocumin. So it makes it reactive to light. Uh, so if you have an interaction within the cell, a lot of light's given off, that light's captured by this little green fiber. If you look at the end there, you can see, um, you're going to have to go around. Look at this end. Now he's pointing it at one cell. Oh, yeah. If you look at this end, yeah. you can see the ends of those little green oh, fibers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, see see oh. yeah. So. So now what, what you're seeing is representing the interaction of a particle in here with the liquid that's in there, with the stuff that's dissolved in the liquid. And then it produces a flash of light, a photon, and the, that's picked up by this little fiber and transmitted here. So you can actually see light there now. Mm -hmm. That's not what you'd see if it was really in the detector because this is open and all the light is going in this end. So what you'd actually see would be more like what Harry just showed you with a flash of light. Yeah. Now the way I've been taught is that neutrinos don't uh, interact by electromagnetism or the strong and weak force. So ha ha what kind of interactions do they have that you, you do can detect? With weak force. They do? Yeah. All right, I've been taught wrong. <laughs> they interact by the weak force. That's the only, but not the only. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they tend not to um, interact with things, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of an odd phenomenon. They pass through the ground, they pass through us, they don't really interact. Every now and then, up north, we see an interaction about every uh, day and a half out of uh, gazillions of them. Because we send uh, just a gazillion... Um, neutrinos north from Fermilab. ...of this corridor, there is actually a wooden model of the telephone, so we'll get a look at that. But if you, if you look, if you're close to the window, you look down, can you see piping going along the surface? Yes. Okay, well, um, about uh, 30 feet underground, underneath that piping, is where there is a tunnel with the accelerator in it. And if you look where the piping's going, um, it's going round to the left and kind of through where that funny looking building with the orange blob in the middle of it is. ...used to detect what happened um, in the collisions between protons going in one direction and when the days when we were looking at the uh, top part in physics, we were actually colliding protons with particles coming in the opposite direction and they were anti-protons. If you line up and look, wow. and you'll notice um, it appears to curve as it's reflected back and two. And the yeah. curve is calculated, you know, to be right because, as I said, it's four miles in circumference. And you'll see in front of you the big accelerator at the top until 1895 and Becquerel in, in Paris. They say, I don't know whether he really was looking for anything, put this piece of rock on a, on a photographic plate and close.
Activity until you could have something that could detect it. Right. So until you can make a detector that detects these things, then you don't know they're there. Right. And nobody knew these things were here. Now you can go on Wikipedia and look up neutrinos and it'll tell you all about it and it'll give you the dates because I'm not very good at remembering dates. These ones, um, um, the, the first ones that were seen were ones that came from the sun. Because in the sun there's a huge <coughs> nuclear reaction going on and some neutrinos are emitted as part of that and um, it was proposed in about in the, sometime in the 30s and it was proposed as a solution to a problem and the problem was that there were these nuclear reactions where there was more going in than there was coming out right? and as you know matter and energy whatever you care to think about cannot be created or destroyed we've got as much as we've got we may not be able to see it all but we've got it so the thought was you know what's going on here There's, we've got a deficit and it was um a physicist of the day, a famous one whose name is temporarily eluding me, um, <laughs> who said that there is obviously something here coming out. Okay. And so there's some particle. He said that. And then Fermi came along and he named it. Nobody still knew what it was, but he did give it a name. So okay. it was called neutrinos. So that was in the 30s. Okay. And then there were experiments about looking at the neutrinos that came from the sun. And that's where one of the mysteries about them came from, because they calculated how many they ought to be able to detect. You know, using some method, when you think about the sun, they can much is going on in the sun and it radiates it out all from the surface of the sun. Right. So here we've got a little detector and here's the sun. So you should be able to figure out, you know, how many neutrinos are hitting that thing, right? Right. Well, it turned out they could only see a third of them. That's a big discrepancy. You've lost 66% right. you thought you were counting. Right. That's a pretty big. So there was obviously something very peculiar. So, so it went on from there. And it's really with the advance of technology and, you know, building detectors like the one we saw, like Harry explained, you know, how to build a detector that can see these and how to build electronics that can get rid of all the noise because you're only seeing a tiny, tiny little right. signal and most of what you're seeing is something else that you're not interested in at all. Right. So how to see that time. So it's always an advance in technology of kind that pushes the real advance. I mean, we have theorists who'll say it looks as though it might be like this, but until you've got some technology to go along with it, you can't do anything. Right. Right? Right. So anyway, so these are, these are what we're, we're looking at. Well, we make new electron neutrinos. So here's the electron associated neutrino with it. Here's a muon, another particle. And, you know, this is part of another thing here. Um, everything that we can see in the universe like protons and neutrons are just made up of these two particles. But there are these. Now this one is just like this one, except it's heavier. Yeah. And this one is just like this one, except it's much heavier. It's really, really heavy. That one's heavier than that one. That one's heavier than that one, and that one's heavier than that one. So we've got these three things. And what we see is actually made up of these two. So as somebody said, who ordered the others? <laughs> Why are they there? We don't know. Okay, so the same thing, we've got three families. Could there be four? Well, it turns out there could be more families because somebody downstairs 
actually, uh, they've got some evidence that there might be another neutrino, which would really upset physics. Really? Because, I mean, if you've got <laughs> another one of those, yeah. I've got, He's got another, another, one of those. another laptop. And what about this lot up here? And is it only one or is it two? I mean, are there two more? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. So we've got this really fascinating situation. The, the, there's something else as well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to overwhelm you, but I mean it really is fascinating. The universe is accelerating, so it's going, the bigger it gets, the faster it's expanding. Right, so everything that was present at the time of the Big Bang that was all in one spot is actually moving out in all directions. So the universe is expanding in all directions. And so the light that comes from that stuff is getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So if you, you want to see far away in the universe to look at what was here when the Big Bang came, you need a very, very powerful camera because the light is very, very dim. Right, so this camera was made here, so you can see. Um, it was actually made on site down there. They had this clean room and everything and they mounted it. Um, and assembled it all and tested it all and did everything and then they took it apart and they moved it down to Chile and it's now collecting data down in Chile it's the Blanco telescope down in Chile so um, this dark energy camera is supposed to be looking for this stuff that's, that's way out this light coming from the, the very early part of the universe which is supposed to help with this dark energy Problem. I don't know exactly how, but it's very interesting, and you can get some really, uh, you know, sometimes people give lectures on that here at the lab, and you get some fantastic um, videos that they've taken from the telescope over time lapse, you know, so you get all these sort of pictures of the stars coming and going, and really, it's really that's all fascinating. Yeah. Well, this is the fab this is the fabrication area, so Very cool. <laughs> yep. Liquid nitrogen in glass.
if you could go there, that's what it'd look like. So this is the linear accelerator. Now, inside this outside casing is this. And the beam is actually going through here. There's an example of this further down, so you'll see an actual thing. And it's not as big as it looks in this picture. But the beam actually goes through here. Now, there's one more thing, you know, We've talked about temperature. This is not superconducting, so it's not cold. But we've talked about expansion and contraction and all these difficulties about keeping things running. Okay, there's one more thing. If you think about it, if you want to send protons through a beam, protons are tiny, 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 tiny little things, right? And if you didn't do anything about it, what would be in there? What's yeah. there? Air. Quite a bit of air. Air's made of big fat molecules, right? Carbon dioxide, well, it's not much carbon dioxide, but there's a bit. Oxygen, nitrogen mostly. And so you've got all these, and you've got these tiny protons, which are smaller than any of those things. So you wouldn't want them to collide, right? Because otherwise you'd just lose your beam. So you better take the air out of there, which is not as easy as it sounds. We have three layers of vacuum pumps to do that. So you have to get this pressure really, really, really low, and it is. It's a, in some places, the pressure is as low as it is on the moon. So there's nothing to do oh. there. What's the, what's the volume of the inner of the tube? Oh, and that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a whole bit? Yeah. Or so, so, this tube? No, the, the, all inside here. Right? So,
Now the accelerator actually ends at the end of this corridor with there's some double doors down there. So you can imagine every time you see this amplifier, then the beam is being clicked with this radio frequency. So it's quick and quick and quick and quick down to the end. And it's going faster and faster and faster. So timing is very important. You have to keep it in the Now we won't go to the end of the time. We'll take a look at the end of the time. We'll take a look at the end of the time. We'll take a You'll notice they have funny names for the yes. conference rooms. <laughs> Now that, that linear accelerator, is that involved in the neutrino making process? Is that oh, part sure. of that experiment? Yes. It, the whole chain is. The whole chain oh, okay. Of is this where the chain starts? Yes, it starts up at the radio frequency quadrupole, continues through the LINAC, then through the booster, and then through the main And the booster is the circular one? The booster is the small circular one with the building in the middle. All right, yes. okay. Um, this is the control room and this is...